All right, now let's do a quick tour of Dynair. So first of all, what is Dynair? And if you go to the homepage of the project, uh, you will see that it is uh, microeconomic modeling for all. So let's hit about. Um, it is a software platform for handling a wide class of economic models, DSG models, overlapping generation models, um, and those models rely either on rational expectations, uh, but also different expectation formations. So for instance, an, um, agents perfectly anticipate the future, so perfect foresight simulations, or limited rationality or imperfect knowledge, etc. Now, it is user a user-friendly and intuitive way of describing these models as you would in a, a macroeconomic paper. So you see equations in a macroeconomic paper and you can more or less just copy them into a text file containing the list of model variables, the equations, and then computing tasks that you need to do. Now, many routines are already implemented into toolboxes, into Dynair, and maybe for you, very important, uh, various public bodies like central banks, ministries, um, international organizations use Dynair on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is a very important skill for you to have to be able to solve and simulate and even maybe estimate these G or OLG models with the help of Dynair. Okay, so this is the current team uh, that is uh, responsible for the development of Dynair. Um, you might know this guy here. First of all, Dynair is its own toolbox and has its own syntax, but the underlying code of Dynair, it hacks into MATLAB. Okay, so in a sense, we still need to be to work with MATLAB and we can actually do stuff in MATLAB and combine this with what Dynair can do. Dynair is also built upon um, script files. Um, MATLAB script files have the .m ending, Dynair script files have the .mod ending. So let me open a new script and let's save this as format all files and let's create a new one and new Cajun model zero MOD. Very important, it needs to have the MOD. Now, if you want to have those nice coloring scheme um, of MATLAB, go to preferences and then also include under languages MOD as a file extension. So MATLAB will uh, highlight stuff. In the paper, in a macroeconomic paper, we would see a model or the model equations and then we would See, um, we would see what are the endogenous variables, what are the exogenous variables, what are parameters, and how are those parameters calibrated or estimated. Um, and this is what we now need to write down in this MOD file. So for instance, uh, in a typical New Keynesian model, we have variables y, pi, r, maybe something like a Taylor rule, and maybe some other parameters. Okay, I've written with the double slash, which is one way to provide comments to Dynair script MOD to Dynair MOD files with either the double slash, or of course you can also use like in MATLAB the percentage sign. Okay, so just some names what these variables mean. Those are the endogenous variables. Okay, so I'm declaring endogenous variables. All right. Now, let me also declare exogenous variables. Okay, typically we have maybe three shocks. Okay, so for instance, a monetary policy shock, a productivity shock, and a confidence shock. Okay, note how this works. Okay, we have certain keywords like var or var exo. This is endogenous variables, this is exogenous variables. And then we simply provide a list of variables and this statement, this block is terminated with a semicolon. This is not MATLAB code. This is code that is interpreted, pre-processed by Dynair's preprocessor, which is actually written in C++. Okay, uh, and we will um, see how this exactly works in the course of this lecture. Okay, so those are our exogenous, those are our endogenous variables. Let's also provide parameters all right, so those are the parameters of the model and those parameters, of course, need values. And Dynair is on the one hand able to estimate 
models. Okay, so then you get your values from estimation, but for our course, we're not going to estimate anything. We're just going to simulate. So in a sense, we are going to calibrate the parameters. So give those parameters a number. And then the model equations. So there might be something like an Euler equation, like a Phillips curve, like a cost push shock process, confidence shock process, a Taylor rule, and how the actual nominal interest rate is set. And this is done in a model block. So we have model and end. Okay. And this is it. This is a mode file. Okay, let's save this mode file. All right. We have to tell MATLAB where to find Dynea. And we do this by adding the path to Dynea. Okay, and if you are on Windows, this will be typically something like C um, Dynea 5.1. And we need to include the MATLAB folder. I'm on a Mac, so my installation is rather in here and I have 5.1 and very importantly just include the path of MATLAB. All right so you can then if you run Dynair you see this is Dynair version and it tells you all right now I need a mode file. So let's provide Dynair with a mode file. Um, this is called nk0 and let's see what happens. Nothing much okay it just tells you all right I am pre-processing the model okay so I am taking this mode file and I'm doing something with it. And actually, if you had a look here, let me delete all those. We started out with just the mode file, okay? And we didn't do any computations yet. We didn't tell Dynair to compute a steady state or do some simulations, whatever. Just We've just written down the declaration of uh, variables, parameters, and provided some numbers to those parameters. So let's see again what happens. So. First of all, here you can see that we get a log file. Let's have a look at the log file. This is basically just whatever is printed uh, out here is saved in the log file. Then you have a folder where, well, nothing is really saved out except here. This is the end workspace. After Dynair finishes, it simply saves some variables of the workspace okay so the m under and you can see that we actually created a whole lot of variables and some of those variables are saved into the workspace so you can by double clicking you can quickly access them now what about this plus folder and now this plus folder is actually what Dynair's preprocessor does okay so first of all this mode file is translated into a driver okay if you have a look into the driver here this is MATLAB code, okay? It creates new global variables, it uh, saves some information about Dynair, and it then takes your specific mode file and puts it into a very general name-independent framework that um, Dynair can then work under the hood. Okay, so it creates all sorts of structures and objects and names, and how many exogenous, how many uh, endogenous variables you have. So those, it puts this basically all the model information is basically put into a global variable called M underscore. If you have a look at this M underscore, this has much information about your model, your specific model. All right, and this driver does that. Information about the parameters is saved in this M underscore, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then there is an options structure which contains many many options default options which you can actually change in a very easy way and also there is an OO underscore structure which contains result since we did not do any computations yet this is just initial initializations okay it will contain the result for your steady state and will contain the result for any simulations you do uh, or uh, even estimations that you do the parameters are updated with the values that you provided. So here you can see that Dynair's under the hood framework is name independent. Even though a parameter is called uh, row y in your mode file, Dynair will store it in this structure m underscore params. It's the fourth parameter, okay? Depending on the order you declared 
the parameter, this parameter. Okay, and then it's doing computations. We did not do any computations yet and simply saving everything into the output folder. Okay, so if you do, do some computations and you get any pictures and stuff like that, those pictures will all be saved in this NK0 without the plus sign folder. Now let's have, there's more in this plus folder. Now these dynamic and static files, those are um, the Jacobians of your model equations, either the dynamic Jacobians, the first, second, and even third right here, um, or, or, or the static Jacobians. Um, we will have a look how what this exactly means um, in the in a future uh, session. All right. Okay. So this is what Dynair does, anyways. Okay. So we did not do any computations yet, and we do get a bunch of new files here, folders, and if we have a look at our workspace, those variables like the m underscore, the o underscore, the options underscore, and all the parameters that I've calibrated are also in the workspace. And this is very important. A mode file is on the one hand Dynair specific, but on the other hand, it can also contain just normal MATLAB code. Okay, so this is treated right here. This is not contained in a block that is ended with an end and semicolon. So this is then just passed through to the driver to, um, uh, this is MATLAB code. Okay, so this is why this is also in the workspace. Now, let's compute, for instance, the steady state. I have no idea how to compute the steady state of the model. It is a fixed point, uh, and Dynair can try to find this fixed point using numerical uh, optimization. Okay, so let's copy everything over, and let's create a new file. Okay, let's call this new Cajun one all files, MOD. And let's try to find the fixed point, the steady state numerically. And for this, we need to provide initial values. By default, they are all going to be zero. So let's say initval, again, this is a Dynair block. So this is not MATLAB code, but a Dynair block. And we have a variable Y, I think it's going to be 1.5, I don't know. I have a variable pi, it's going to be one. I have a variable r, it's going to be one, and the r Taylor, well actually here, action nominal is exactly the same, so this is also one, I think, I don't know. This is just me guessing what the, the value could be. So eps a, let's have a look at the equation for eps b and eps a. Ah, well, those are shocks. They are zero in the steady state, so actually this is a log, log of one will be zero, so okay, this is analytically even possible to solve, but right now we're going to do this numerically. All right, and then I'm going to tell Dynair, hey, compute the steady state. Save and run Dynair new k engine one. And you can see that Dynair did find the steady state. So if there's an error, if we weren't able to find the steady state, then there would be an error. And all right, so it seems like those are the steady state results. So a gross inflation rate of 0 0.9. This looks strange. Um, how about if I put a two here and a 2.5 here, what happens? Huh. So there seems to be um, that there is no unique steady state. And this is a common thing that can happen depending on your model. So in a sense, we could actually uh, provide any values here. And this is where we do need to resort to pen and paper again. Okay, and we will, uh, I will teach you, of course, how to do this, um, how to solve, uh, how to look at the model equations, how to try to find the steady state, for instance, analytically. Yeah, in some cases, we do need to rely to numerical methods, but in many cases, for at least several variables, we can provi provide the exact analytical expression how to compute the steady state. So let's do this, okay? How do we do this? Let's copy again everything, all right? Um, let's not use initval, but let's now use a so-called steady state model block. I've done the work on pen and paper and I've come up with a way to compute the steady state analytically and I'm simply writing this down, all right? And again, note that 
here I, I even write you with a comment actually those variables are undefined you can put you can you should fix them you should normalize them to something all right let's save this as new engine 2.mod save let's run this again so dynair new engine 2 and this will compute to you the steady state analytically or using the analytical expressions that you provided here. Then it does check whether this is a correct steady state or not. So say you did something wrong and you think this is 0 0.5, you will get an error. So this steady state, the model block did not compute the actual steady state. Okay, now let's run simulations. Let's uh, run stochastic simulations, okay? Again, let's copy everything, create a new file, let's call this new Cajun 3.mod. Now we computed the steady state, now I also want to do stochastic simulations for instance. So I need to tell Dynair something about the shocks. Okay, in a stochastic context we assume in Dynair that the shocks are multivariate random normally distributed, so uh, they have a zero mean and I can only pr say something about the variance, for instance. So let's say this is, the standard error is 0 0.01 and the variance is therefore squared and I don't only have eta a as a shock but also eta r, eta b. And then there is a command called stocksimo, which is a built-in toolbox to do stochastic simulations and you can either run it directly, this, will, this would work, or you can change some settings. So for us, important will be the order setting. Let's do a first order um, yeah. perturbation solution first. Uh, let's compute impulse response functions with a horizon of 20. And let's even simulate data for say to a thousand periods, semicolon. And I'm also changing MATLAB's default line width to something thicker here such that we can see the pictures here better. Okay, Dynair, New Cajun 3, let's see. You get a bunch of output down below here and we get impulse response functions for our variables. Okay, one for the first shock, for the second shock and for the third shock. Okay, note that the first shock does not influence all of the variables. And in the impulse response function, um, what that is, Again, we are going to talk about this in the lecture series later on. Those were the impulse response functions. We also wanted to simulate data. And here you can have a look into the workspace. Okay, so you have new variables created. Uh, for instance, for um, y of my output, right? This is a thousand times one double variable. So these are simulated. So I've drawn a thousand chalks. I've have some sort of solution concept, uh, a policy function which with which I then create and simulate this data. And those are just the impulse response functions where there is only one shock in period zero and no shocks at the, um, in any other period. Okay, so those variables are readily accessible in the workspace and you can use MATLAB for instance to do nicer plots, to do further computations, etc. Let's have a look at what is outputted here. Okay, so we basically stopped at the steady state results and then we get some additional model summary, how many state variables, jump variables we have and static variables. Uh, we are going to talk about this, of course, as well. What is the covariance matrix of my shocks? And then, this is very important, this is what my policy and transition functions look like. Um, since we put order equals one, this is a linear state space system um, from which we do the simulations and the impulse response function. Um, again, we are going to talk this uh, about this in much detail in the course of the semester. Then moments are computed for the simulated variables, correlations, autocorrelations, there is a variance decomposition, how important are certain shocks for which variables, and it took just nine seconds to do all this. So say if I do a order equals two, I'm actually doing a perturbation of second order 
approximation. Let's do this as well. Well, if you do compare the pictures, there's not much change, not an obvious change. There's some small differences because this model I'm using here is so linear. There's not much sense in going to a second order. Nevertheless, I want to show you that the output here in the command window looks very similar, except sometimes, now for instance, the policy and transition functions not only include linear terms, but also quadratic terms, okay? And again, uh, what that means exactly, I'm going to talk about this in a future session. All right, those were stochastic simulations. Now let's do um, simulations under a different um, assumption about how agents form expectations. Let's do the extreme case of perfect foresight. Okay, so again, let's copy and create a new mode file. Let's call this new Keynesian 4.mod. Now, in the perfect foresight, we don't provide information about the covariance matrix of the normally distributed shocks. We actually go ahead and tell Dynair exactly what the shocks will be in which period. The variable eta b, the shock, uh, the exogenous variable eta b, uh, in period 1 and 4 should have the value minus 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.1. So there is an effect on impact. Okay, this is a confidence shock. And there is an effect in four quarters. Okay, so this one will then be anticipated because we are doing the simulations here under perfect foresight. Now, the command here is not stochastic simulations, but it is perfect foresight uh, setup and perf perfect foresight solver. And here, there are a bunch of options that you that we will have a look at. So this is perfect foresight simulations. I'm also changing the line plots a bit thicker so we can actually then see something. All right, and now let's run this again. New Keynesian 4. And you can see that the solution was, it's a now a model simulation. It was found quite fast, just took five iterations uh, and the perfect foresight solution was found. And using this rplot command, I have now a plot. The blue line is the nominal interest rate. Um, output is the red and the yellow one is inflation. Okay, so, and the nominal interest rate here is actually uh, the gross nominal interest rate. So there is actually something like a zero lower bound of one, okay? Uh, and we can do, or we can implement this now very easily in Dynair. So again, let's copy, let's create a new mode file. So let's tell the perfect foresight solver that R cannot get below one. So let's have a look at our model equations. And this is why I have this additional actual nominal interest rate. The actual nominal interest rate is not supposed to go below one. So we can put a max operator, for instance, in here. So this should be either one or above, but not below. Let's save this and let's run this again. New Keynesian 5. And you can see now that the blue curve, there's a zero lower bound. Okay, and this has, of course, an at adverse effect on output deviation from its steady state. Okay. Now, Dynair also has some uh, sort of mix between stochastic uh, simulation and deterministic simulations called the so-called um, extended path, for instance. There are so many other toolboxes uh, that uh, you can use in Dynair and that we, and we keep improving Dynair to keep up with the literature, to really give you state-of-the-art uh, and user-friendly ways to do macroeconomic research. Okay, let's have a look at the extended path solution method or simulation method. Okay, so again, let's copy everything. Let's call this new Keynesian 6.
Now, the extended path solution method is stochastic nature. So I'm not going to tell the values, but again, I need to tell the covariance matrix structure. So here we are going to draw again shocks. Okay, I'm not doing perfect foresight solutions here, um, but the command is uh, just extended path. And how many periods do you want to do this? What that is, uh, we are well, we are going to talk about this in a future se session. It is a stochastic simulation, but it is based on the perfect foresight solution method. And then let me plot R, let me plot Y, and let me plot Pi, and let's see what happens. And there you go, you have simulations where in each period there are new shocks drawn and in each period th those shocks are assumed to be unexpected to the agents under the assumption that there will be no shocks anymore uh, in future periods and then the next period there will be again the same game so this is really the mixture about um, stochastic simulations and perfect foresight simulations um, with the extend so-called extended path. So let me wrap up. You have to declare the endogenous variables. You have to declare the exogenous variables. You have to declare the names of your parameters. You have to provide, in a way, numerical values to the parameters, either by calibration or by estimating the model. Then you have to, or you have to declare the model equations in the model block. Um, model equations are always ended with a semicolon. And then you do computations, for instance, steady state model, uh, you do stochastic or deterministic simulations. You can do an identification analysis of your model. You can do a global sensitivity analysis. You can do optimal policy exercises. You can estimate your model with uh, maximum likelihood, with uh, Bayesian MCMC method, with the method of moments. Um, there are many toolboxes and many functions that we already implemented in Dynair, and there's much to come in future versions as well. So check out the manual if you are interested in certain things. Unfortunately, the manual is a manual and not a user guide. So this is really a reference for you if you want to know how um, extended path works, what options you can change, then you should use the manual. All right, so this is very quick tour of Dynair and I hope you found this useful. Have a good day, bye bye.